So, we will continue our discussion on principle of hydraulic machines and system design. Uh, today we will discuss about radial flow pump testing. So, before I go to discuss about the pump testing procedure, I will briefly touch upon a few important things that, uh, that is in continuation with my last lecture that is uh, effect of effect of inlet swirl on the cavitation of pump. So, effect of inlet swirl on the cavitation of a pump. So, this is in this is what we have discussed in my last lecture that uh, cavitation is not a desirable phenomenon at all that is uh, whenever we are installing a particular pump we should prefer to install pump to run in a flooded suction mode. So, that apart from the atmospheric head we may have a static height that is there above the impeller axis or pump datum. Now, if we can recall that uh, if we we have discussed that the if the swirl component of velocity at the inlet have positive, negative uh, or it may be a 0. So, if I draw the inlet velocity triangles, if I say if I consider a radial flow pump, So, this is the impeller of, of a radial flow pump and this is the, a blade 1 2 and if I take out this blade and if I draw the velocity triangle at the inlet, these are the components of velocity. and this is point 1, this is point 2. This is component of absolute velocity in the tangential direction and this is component of relative velocity in the tangential direction and this angle is alpha 1 flow angle at the inlet and this is beta 1 the blade angle at the inlet. Now, we have seen that the swirl component might have a positive value, negative value or 0 that is C theta 1 may be a positive may be positive or it may be a negative value it may have a negative value or it may be 0. So, C theta 1 may have a positive value or negative value or 0. So, if it is 0 that is no swirl at the inlet no swirl at the inlet that is swirl free operation. right? And if we have a positive C theta 1, negative C theta 1 that is uh, swirl component have positive value, negative value here this is C theta 1 is positive and uh, we may have a negative component of C theta 1 that is negative component of C theta that is a uh, negative swirl at the inlet. So, what we normally go that uh, as I said that we may have a positive component when the direction of I mean the direction of rotation of the impeller and fluid are in the same direction or we may have a negative swirl component if the rotation of the fluid and the impeller are different. Now, a best possible case is uh, there will be no swirl at the inlet. So, if we now recall that head developed by the pump is u 2 c theta 2 minus u 1 c theta 1 divided by g, then if we have a no swirl at the inlet then this head developed by the pump can be written u 2 c theta 2 by z. But from this expression of Euler head I, we can see that a positive value from this expression we can see that a positive value of C theta 2 a positive value of C theta 1 will always try to reduce the head being developed a 0 value is the best possible case because it neither will reduce or neither will you know it it, it will not decrease rather uh, it also will not increase the head develop, but a negative component will always increase the head developed by the pump. So, we have seen that a positive value will always decrease the head being developed by the pump, 0 value is the best possible case because it will not increase or it will not decrease, but a negative component will always increase the head or rather will impart a head uh, that is being developed by the pump. But we have seen that this negative component of C theta 1 that means if we draw for a negative component of C theta 1 then since for a 
given inlet diameter of the out, out you know impeller the tangential velocity at the inlet is remaining same. So, now if we have a negative C theta 1 that is the component that are most the you know, rotation of the fluid and the uh, incoming fluid and impeller are in different direction. So, uh, we may have this is C 1 C theta this C 1 and to make you know that to keep U 1 fixed we have a higher relative velocity at the inlet. Since U 1 is fixed this is C 1 and this is C theta 1 this is negative C theta 1 and this is W theta 1. Here U 1 W th is equal to C theta 1 you know W theta 1 minus U 1 is equal to C theta 1 that means a negative component of solve velocity at the inlet can be produced whenever we are having a rotation of the fluid and the rotation of the impeller are, are different. But since the blade velocity at the inlet is fixed because diameter is fixed, so to maintain a constant blade velocity at inlet and if you would like to have a negative solve component at the inlet, the relative velocity W1 at the inlet should be high, it should increase. Now, if relative velocity at the inlet increases that is at the impeller inlet I of the impeller, then pressure will fall and if pressure falls the vapor pressure at that temperature that what we have discussed that it may uh, initiate cavitation in the you know pump and which is not a desirable phenomenon at all. So, from this discussion what we can tell that a negative C theta a negative component of solve velocity might impart head that is being developed by the pump that it may increase the head being developed by the pump, but at the same time it is inviting another problem which is not a desirable phenomenon at all cavitation in the pump operation. So, we should not go for the negative solve velocity. So, our best possible case is the no solve at the inlet because it neither increases or decreases not decreases the head being developed by the pump. Okay, with this I will proceed to discuss our uh, next that is the testing of a radial flow pump. So, it is very important that we should know whenever we are why you are testing a radial flow pump and why you what, what are the steps you need to follow while, while you are testing the radial flow pump. So, a radial flow pump testing radial flow pump testing so, that means why you do why do we need to study a radial flow pump testing because by testing we can generate h cube curve that is there all the same times we should know what are the step and what are the procedure I mean why we do follow all those steps while uh, testing is done. So, again uh, I will draw a schematic of the setup of pump testing of course, a radial flow pump testing setup of pump testing. So, if I draw the schematic suppose this is the pump and pump is used to supply water in a delivery tank where static height is where static height is Z d. So, here we are writing the static height is let us say H d and pump is withdrawing water pump is withdrawing water uh, you know pump is withdrawing water from the inlet from the sum. So, if the sum is located let us say H s distance below from the impeller axis or pump axis. So, uh, this is the sum location which is located you know at a distance H s below the pump axis. So, this is H s this is open to atmosphere and this is pump suction site. So, we are having one suction gauge we are having one delivery gauge. So, this is suction pipe we are having strainer one valve at the suction side we are not drawing all those this is delivery pipe and it is supplying water in the delivery tank this is 
delivery tank. This is sump and this one is the radial flow pump. So, as I said that we go for pump testing to have uh, to generate H cube curve. Also, we need to know the steps rather procedures of a pump testing so that uh, what could be the uh, you know actual when you are designing a pumping system what should be there in a pumping uh, system. I mean and how one operator can start a pump initially all these things can be uh, you know uh, understood from this uh, pump testing uh, process. So, of course, we should have a flow control valve over here. So, here we will have one valve this is called flow control valve. We will have one strainer over here, strainer. The function of strainer is to arrest all the you know foreign particle. If we do not provide strainer, the foreign particle might go through the through the flow velocity in the suction side and it may collide with the impeller, it may try to erode the impeller material. So, we should have a strainer to arrest all the foreign particle that is there in the sum. We should have a flow control valve at the delivery side and sometimes you are providing one also non return valve by the uh, pump suction side. Sometimes you are providing one non return valve this is called NRV that is non return valve. Also we are providing uh, another non return valve at the pump delivery side this is, non, this is called gate valve to control the actually we should have gate valve to control the flow also we should have one non return valve at the pump delivery side because if pump stops suddenly then if pump is discharging water to a certain height then whatever water is there in the delivery pipeline that may if we do not provide any non return valve that may eventually create a thrust on the pump impeller and it may destroy the bearing the you know, thrust bearing or uh, you know bearing of the pump. So, we should also provide a non return valve in the pump delivery side only to prevent the water you know incoming water that is there in the delivery pipe when pump stops suddenly. So, this is non return valve. Now, if this is the point 1 suppose this is point 1 and this is a suction this is suction gauge. Suction gauge and this is D delivery and this is delivery gauge. So, as I said that uh, first objective is of pump testing is to generate H cube curve and second objective is to know what are the procedure of pump testing at least from this an operator should know what are the procedure when he or she starts the pump initially in a pumping system. So, how I can measure because uh, whenever I whenever I purchasing a pump from a pump manufacturer they will provide H cube curve, but we need to test we need to you know calibrate. So, um, we need to test whether the pump is really supplying that amount of discharge against a head H or against a uh, you know particular head. So, whenever pump is supplying water to a delivery pipe, so how do we measure flow rate? So, there are, there are two important quantity I can measure flow rate cube. I can calculate H, how I can calculate H because I know the head that will be developed by the pump that is what is the total static height pump needs to overcome also the frictional losses in the delivery side and in the valves you know bends all those things. So, flow rate cube and head this is head that is total head developed by the pump. It may be a head loss in the suction side plus delivery side. If the pump the schematic whatever I have drawn is in the negative suction mode that is pump is drawing water from the sum and discharging to a different place. But if it is in a flooded suction mode because in that case impeller axis or pump data is always below the water level then on the top of that atmospheric head we are having uh, another head which is equal to the static height uh, that is the height uh, you know above the pump axis. So, I can calculate head that is a, this will be total static height 
that pump needs to lift plus dynamic head loss because of that is frictional because because of friction losses in valves vents etc so frictional head loss in the pipeline losses in the valves and also vents this total static height plus dynamic head loss is the h that i need i can calculate whenever a pumping is whenever a pump is installed in a pumping station to serve a certain purpose now i can measure flow rate suppose whenever pump is discharging i can measure flow rate that i know that pump is delivering this amount of air that i can obtain from the delivery gauge reading and suction gauge reading that is delivery gauge reading minus suction gauge reading is the total head being developed by the pump now i can obtain that whenever the head is being developed by the pump is this then what is the flow rate so i can measure flow rate q whenever pump is discharging that i can use that amount of water that i can pass that that amount of water in a v notch that flow measurement a flow measuring device that is v notch oil right so i can obtain q is equal to cd into 8 by 15 tan theta by 2 root 2g into h to the power 5 by 2 so in a v notch this angle is theta by 2 and there are height from height that is you know inserted in this v notch we can obtain what is the height and i know the cd i can calculate q so by ob observing the height of the water in the notch and i know the theta by 2 that is notch angle and i can calculate what is the amount of keep being being di discharged by the pump against a head that is calculated between the reading that is the calculated based on the reading obtained in the delivery gauge and suction gauge so from this i can you know obtain so uh, uh, i can obtain h versus q for the particular pump and uh, also i need not to directly use this formula sometimes there is a calibration chart is provided the v notch h versus q so if i know this is the h this is the h and this is the h so i may obtain corresponding q so i may not use directly this formula or sometimes the calibration chart is provided the v notch only because only by measuring the height over the notch i can directly obtain the flow rate from the chart so this is all about the flow rate measurement and i know that what is the head being developed by the pump that is obtained from the suction gauge and delivery gauge reading so i can easily i can easily obtain h versus q curve in the uh for the particular pump and as i said from the discussion in the last problem in, la in my last lecture that h cube curve whatever i am plotting and that may not be the actual curve be because actual curve will look like it won't be a straight line uh it may have some uh it may deviate from the straight line because of the recirculation losses and separation losses in the suction and delivery side respectively okay now this is all about the measurement of flow rate now how can i measure suction gauge reading and delivery gauge reading that we need to know so i will now proceed and i will now write the steps so what are the steps before i discuss about the calculation of head that the suction gauge and delivery gauge now i'll write the steps of pump testings because i cannot run i cannot suddenly run the pump so i need to know what are the basic steps so first step of the pump operation is that step 1 priming is done this is very important operation and important operation priming is done to push out air from impeller so priming operation is done initially to push out air from the impeller that means because as i said that the schematic that i have drawn is essentially for the negative suction mode if it is a flooded suction mode so always the impeller is filled up with the water because impeller axis itself is a below the water level of the sum so always the impeller is filled up with water so there is no question of having air inside the impeller but if the pump is running in a negative suction mode we need to ensure that before i start 
pump uh, all the air that is present in the impeller should push out I mean should go away. So, we need to push out the air which is there in the impeller and that is known as priming operation. How it is done? Because there is a tank of water which is above the pump axis and a tank is connected with the impeller by a pipe. So, before I start to run the pump, I mean before I start the pump, initially tank is open and water is allowed to come from tank to the impeller so that the impeller will be, impeller will be filled up by water and the, that air that is there in the impeller will go away. And we need to ensure that impeller is properly impeller and the suction pipe is properly filled up with the water. No air is there in, I mean inside the impeller as well in the pipeline. This is quite obvious because if air is there inside the impeller and we have seen if we go back, if I go back to my previous slide, if I go back to my previous slide then I can see that here atmospheric head is only the available head because if air is there then again atmospheric head then it is very difficult to have any driving force between the point 1 and S so that water will go away. So, it is very difficult. So, it to ensure that we have to have priming operation I mean that is done before we start pump. Step 2, so I cannot run pump suddenly step 2 delivery valve, delivery valve is remaining closed initially, remaining closed initially and fully closed, remaining closed initially rather fully closed. right. Step 3, this is very important. So, step 1 priming is done, we have to ensure that there should not be any air inside the impeller or in the suction side and I have I told how to how priming operation is done. That is water is being allowed to come from a, a tank which is located at the top of the pump and it will enter the impeller, what impeller will be filled up by the water and water air will go away. Second step the delivery valve is fully closed, before I, before I start the pump delivery valve will remain fully closed. Step 3 pump starts and delivery valve open gradually, opens gradually. So, these are the three basic steps that we need to ensure before I start operating the pump. So, we, we have to have priming operation if it is again I am telling if it is a negative suction mode, if the pump is if the pump is located in a place where pump will run in a flooded suction mode, then we need not to worry about this uh, problem because we need not to go for the priming operation. Then delivery valve is we need to ensure that delivery valve will remain closed fully before I start the pump. Step 3 pump starts whenever I, I am starting the pump and at the same time I should you know open the valve delivery valve gradually not fully. Now, because isn't of, of course, because if I open the delivery valve suddenly then it will try to discharge huge amount. So, initially power will be high and that power uh, may not be equal to the you know power provided by the electric motor. So, pump may you know there will be a you know shut up condition. So, pump may trip. So, because power depends upon rho q g into h. So, if I close, if I open the delivery valve initially fully, then pump will try to supply full amount of discharge against the full head and then what will happen? The head you know power that will be drawn from the electric motor will be high. So, that and it there might be a situation the electric motor will not be able to supply that amount of power. So, pump may trip, I mean pump may stop rather electric motor will not be able to uh, run the pump. Now, I will go to measure the suction and delivery gas reading. So, if I apply Bernoulli equation rather steady flow energy equation between points 1 and S, how can what I can I write? So, P atmospheric by gamma plus you know uh, v 1 square by 2 g is equal to I am taking some axis a datum is equal to P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 g plus H s plus H f s. So, H s is the static height H f s which in, you know takes the losses I mean 
that is because of uh, that is their frictional losses, losses due to bends, valves, strainers, etc. Where P s and V s are the pressure and velocity at the suction side. Pressure and velocity at the suction side. From this expression, what I can write again. As I said, the cross section area of the sum is much much higher than the pipe cross section. So, V1 is much much greater than Vs. So, I can ignore this term. So, we are left with P ATM by gamma is equal to Ps by gamma plus Vs square by 2g plus Hs plus Hfs. So, this is the expression of PATM by gamma from the suction side that is if I apply steady flow energy equation between point 1 and S. So, I can write P S by gamma is equal to you know uh, and this is also 0 PATM by gamma also 0 this is because this is open to atmosphere. So, I should not write this so it be 0. So, minus Vs square by 2g minus h plus hs plus hfs. So, if I apply Bernoulli equation between point 1 and s eventually I get that the pressure available at the suction side is a negative pressure. So, this is negative pressure that is we have to have negative pressure at the suction side otherwise how that atmospheric pressure will try will, will try to push water from sum to the pump. So, this is a negative pressure that is pressure below the atmospheric pressure. So, this is pressure below the atmospheric pressure or negative pressure. So, we have we will have a negative pressure at the suction side and if we do not have a negative pressure at the suction side, there will not be a pressure defined. So, pressure at the suction side should be always less than the atmospheric pressure and it will and then we will have a driving force and the driving force will allow water to go from sum to the you know uh, pump. Now, again if I apply boundary equation between point again if I apply boundary equation between points D and 2 mine it 2 is a point which is located at the atmosphere. So, if I go back to the you know my previous slide here say this is a point 2. So, it is discharging water open I mean in the sum. So, this is open to atmosphere. So, now if I write bundle equation between point D and 2 how what I what can I write and I am taking impeller axis rather pump axis the datum. So, I can write P D by gamma plus V d square by 2 g plus you know H d equal to P sorry sorry P d by gamma plus V d square by 2 g plus I am taking implied axis at datum. So, that will be equal to P 2 by gamma plus V 2 square by 2 g plus H d plus H d into S because losses in the delivery pipe. Note that since the point 2 is located on the pipe I mean this is a this is pipeline. So, V d and V 2 are same. So, V d equal to V 2. So, this will get cancelled out from both side and P 2 is open to atmosphere. So, this is al almost equal to 0. So, I can obtain P d by gamma equal to H d plus H d s, where this is the static height and this is the frictional loss. So, this is the P d by gamma is equal to H d by H f s. So, what is the pressure rise across pressure rise? Suction pressure we have obtained this is a delivery pressure. So, pressure rise is equal to P d by gamma minus P s by gamma that is equal to H d 
plus H D S minus but negative suction pressure, pressure the suction side what negative. So, it will be plus H S plus H F S plus V S S square by 2 G. So, this is the pressure rise across the impeller. So, pressure rise expression is P D minus P S by gamma and that is given by this expression. So, these are the pressure rise across the impeller. So, now head developed by the pump will be how much? Head developed by the pump will be what is the total head static plus dynamical delivery side P d by gamma plus V d square by 2 z minus P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 z is the head at the delivery side. So, this is the head that will be developed by the pump because we need to have certain velocities at the suction delivery side. So, while you are calculating what would be the head developed by the pump, we need to take total head that is static head plus the dynamic head. So, P d by gamma plus V d square by 2 g is the head at the delivery side and P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 g is the total head at the suction side. So, the difference between two heads are the total head that will be developed by the pump. So, if I just put the magnitude of P d by gamma minus P s by gamma from above in this expression, I can rewrite this expression in a bit different form that is the total head developed by the pump can be written is again I am rewriting P d by gamma plus V d square by 2 g minus P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 g where P d by gamma minus P s minus P s by gamma is given by quantity if we try to recall that H d plus H d s plus H s plus H f s plus V s square by 2 g. So, if I just plug in the value of this quantity here then I can obtain this will be H d plus H d s plus V d square by 2 g plus P d by gamma plus V d square by 2 g minus P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 g. So, P d so V d square by 2 g minus V s square by sorry sorry I am writing H d plus H d s plus V d square by 2 g plus H s plus H f s plus V s square by 2 g minus V s square by 2 g. So, I can rewrite H d plus H d s plus H s plus H f s plus V s square by 2 g plus V d square minus V s square by 2 g. So, it is having three components this is delivery gauge reading So, if we try to obtain the head developed by the pump is essentially the delivery gauge reading, this is suction gauge reading and this is the head developed due to change in velocity between the suction and delivery side delivery side. So, the total head developed the pump from the pump testing operation I can obtain by knowing the delivery gauge reading plus suction gauge reading plus head developed by the head developed due to change in velocity in the uh, suction and delivery side. So, this is the total head developed by the pump in a pump you know uh, in a by radial flow pump in a uh, particular system. From here I can tell you that the velocity at the delivery pipe you know of water and velocity at the velocity of water at the suction side will be different of course, because uh, if the if we recall that the uh, expression of you know uh, 
suction gas reading and delivery gas reading rather if I go back to my previous slide and if I look at the you know expression of negative pressure that is Vs square by 2G plus Hs plus Hfs. So, you know velocity at the suction pipe should be always less because if this quantity becomes high then we will have a higher negative pressure. So, if this quantity is high Vs, so we will have a higher frictional losses and, and from here we can obtain that the this quantity is a positive quantity. So, velocity at the delivery pipe always should be higher than the velocity at the suction pipe. So, if so from here we need to know that the diameter of the suction pipe and delivery pipe should not be equal. So, we can obtain we can see that that we can obtain a clue about the diameter of the delivery and suction pipe from this expression here that V d square minus V square by 2 g which provides which you know gives us a head because of change in velocity. So, velocity at the delivery pipe is always higher than the suction pipe because suction pipe delivery suction pipe velocity is not that much because if velocity increases frictional losses will be high. So, in order to keep losses within the permissible limit we need to have a relatively uh, less velocity at the suction pipe. So, if the velocities are different then of course, pipe diameter will be different uh, to maintain a same flow rate. So, we can get a clue from that what should be the diameter of the pipe at the delivery pipe delivery side and suction side from this quantity. Okay. Now, we will discuss about the one you know pump characteristics curve that I have discussed that pump characteristics curve what H cube curve. We have seen that you know pump should have if I plot the experimental data if I plot the experimental data I will give I will get the pump H cube curve like this. So, this is cube and this is H. So, this is H cube curve. If I if I superimpose because we need to know the efficiency as well as the power. So, if it is power P and it is efficiency eta, then this is H cube curve I may obtain you know pump efficiency is like this. So, pump efficiency is like this and power will be like this. So, this is the best of best efficiency point and so we should and we should allow the pump to run at the best efficiency point. So, this is the discharge corresponds to best efficiency point and this is the head corresponds to best efficiency point. So, efficiency we can obtain because we know that head being developed by the pump what is the head being developed by the pump. So, the power developed by the pump will be rho q g into h at the same time we know how much amount of you know electric motor electric power we are supplying. So, I can obtain that you know power supplied to the pump. So, from there I can calculate efficiency and I can calculate power that is rho q you know g into h. So, this is you know p versus cube this is eta versus cube. So, this is the best efficiency point where power will be less and you know the discharge and head corresponding to this point are known as head at best efficiency point and correspond uh, discharge at the best efficiency point. But now this H cube curve we obtain from the pump test pump testing uh, process. Now we have a system resistance curve. So, we always would not be able to run the pump at the best efficiency point, but we should try. But if the system resistance curve is like this that there is a total static height and it crosses the pump here. So, that means so, if the curve like this, so maybe this is the this is system resistance curve, this is system resistance curve. So, whenever uh, higher system resistance curve meet the H cube curve of the pump, then this is the operating point. Now, see this operating point is not the operating point where we can obtain best efficiency but this depends upon the system resistance. So, it is not possible that we should always allow a pump to run at the best efficiency point we should try, but it also depends upon the system resistance. So, we, know, we need to know the system resistance and uh, whenever we are supplying whenever we are you know uh, procuring a particular pump uh, we should supply the system resistance Maybe we should provide the system information about the total head loss in the system including static height and the dynamic head loss to the pump manufacturer. So, that they will try to you know uh, uh, 
have that all based on that system resistance pump can be operated at the best efficiency point. So, uh, this is all about the pump testing procedure and how we can generate a, a pump H cube curve from the pump testing data and as I said that it is not always possible to run pump at their best efficiency points because it depends on the system resistance that is why we should always provide system information about the system resistance whenever I am purchase whenever we are procuring pump from any pump manufacturer. So, with that I stop here today and we will continue in the next class. Thank you.